What's going on everyone? Gilman with Live Healthy Stocks back with our daily Palantir update video, ticker symbol PLTR, where we take a look at how Palantir stock traded today, key levels of support and resistance that we are looking at moving into the future, and based on that, what we think Palantir stock could do. So real quick, if you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and comment down below what your thoughts on Palantir are, and I'd love to chat with you guys down there. So let me hit record and we will get right into it. So we are down about 36 cents on the day, pretty flat I'd call it, um, but still down 1.35%. We are up another 0.3% in the after hours, putting us, putting us at, excuse me, right at, you know, 1% down on the day. Comparing that with the major indexes, right, we've got the NASDAQ up a percent, we've got the Dow Jones up 400 points, 1.31 percent, and then we've got the S&P 500 up $4.21, which is about 1.1 percent. So compared to all of that, Palantir was slacking, but if you guys remember from the video yesterday, right, it's not super surprising because we did get, um, you know, with the lockup expiration last week, this week we've kind of seen some things around you know, who's selling their shares. And so um, the founder of, of Palantir actually sold um, a lot of their shares as well as some people of the legal team and a couple other people that we discussed in the video yesterday. So the, the fact that that's happening, you know, it's okay that the stock is going down because that's kind of what we were expecting. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna take a look at this article here with you guys. Um, the COO of Palantir, if you guys remember from the uh, demo day that they had, Shyam Shankar, um, Shyam Sunkar um, disclosed in a filing with the SEC that he sold 757,000 shares, uh, priced between $24.5 to $29 a share, and got about $21 million. So someone's banking, um, but you know that's another thing that we look at is the 757,000 shares that they sold um, between February 19th, which was last Friday, I believe, and yesterday, right? So. That was a lot of selling pressure happening as well. The key thing though, and this is what I like to focus on you guys, he sold 750,000 shares, but still owns 2.87 million shares, right? So still believes in the company. They're not selling off because they think the company is super overvalued. They're selling because they have a ton of shares, right? More shares than they can probably, you know, know what to do with. And so it's always a good idea to lock in some money, especially since they weren't allowed to do so earlier. And you know, get some of that dough. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, the key thing that I like though, is this article mentions, hey, this person still owns 2.87, not counting the additional million that he holds in two trusts that he controls, right? So actually it'd be like 3.8 million. So sold a very small percentage, but still that probably caused a lot of selling pressure over the past couple of days. So that was one thing. And then the good news that we saw yesterday was Palantir joining forces with 3M. And in that, you know, we got some news around, um, you know, that they're going to use the Foundry platform to build a dynamic supply chain and respond uh, to changes in demand across tens of thousands of products. So this is great because 3M being the giant conglomerate that they are using Palantir software. And remember that it's unstructured data sets. So once you are in their system, you're more likely to stay in that and kind of use that for a while. That's what we're hoping for at least. And that's why this is really, really good news for for Palantir moving forward um, because it could be a continued partnership for a long time to come and hopefully the first of many as other companies see how how well that uh, that they are doing with this. So I think that this is great news for Palantir um, and I think that you know has a lot of potential to really take off in the near future. So looking at the one day chart, let's see what we see. So get rid of the EMAs here for just a second. And you guys, today was a great day where it kind of really um, did did a good job of staying within our level. So yesterday we struggled to break this 2682 level. And in the after hours, we broke it and we were pushing up, up, up in the pre-market today. We were hitting up right against that next level of ours, but clearly pre-market, we started selling off um, and we bounced off of this level, but then right at open, we try to break above this level, couldn't quite do it. And so we sold off a little and, uh, you know, looked kind of weak there for a little bit, couldn't break view app and then came right back down, pushed up, broke through it again, briefly, very, very briefly. Um, and then we pushed above it again, um, or basically rejected by it. And then we came right back down, broke below view app, and then we had a late push, but we ended up closing below view app. So things that I didn't like about today, the fact that, I mean, obviously we're red for the day. Um, we closed below view app, kind of at view app. We could not break into this 2682 level that we were in, in the pre-market. Things that I 
did like about today is that, you know, we didn't continue falling all the way to the 2539 level. We came up and this kind of late rally at the end was a little bit nice to see. Now let's take a look at the daily chart and see if we can maybe get an indication of where we are headed from here. So again, if you've been with me for a while, right, we were catching this breakout, caught it, went from the 20s to the low 30s, 45 the following couple of days, sold off obviously after the amount we'd gone up pushed up, right, a little bit of run into earnings. Um, and then this past week, right, with the surprise loss that they had, as well as the lockup expiration period, we saw it selling off all the way to the 24s, ran up real quick to the, into the thir towards the 30s, and now we are uh, consolidating a little bit again. So let's take a look at our EMAs. We'll see what we could see. RSI is at 42, so we're not, uh, I mean, we're definitely getting to that oversold side. Um, so that's something to watch out for as well. But uh, what, what do we have coming up in terms of levels of support, levels of resistance? So let's talk about that for just a second. Um, so as you guys could see here, right, we are above the 89, but below the 55 EMAs. Um, so we have, um, let's talk about you know levels of support and then we'll talk about levels of resistance. So, so the first level of support we have is today's low 2575 kind of right there um, and then we've got the 2539 right behind it and then we've got the 2408 and then we've got the 2360s. So those are the levels that I'm looking for if it goes down. Um, again, today's low 2575, then 2539, then 2408 and then the 2360. On the upside uh, is the first level that I'm looking at, which we were above for a little bit today in the pre-market, but then sold off and then tried to go up um, right as market opened, couldn't quite make it. Well, that is the 2682 level, and then we've got the 28 level right here, and then we've got the 2930s uh, level. Um, so those are the three levels that I'm looking at on the upside. Now, what do, what do I think is gonna happen if markets start to remain strong? Um, would not be surprised if we continue consolidating for a little bit, but what I'm hoping for is a break of this 2682 level tomorrow and a push towards the 2806 level, right? The reason being, we've gotten a lot of sell-off related to a lot of insiders selling their shares, um, and I do think it is definitely time for it to start going back up. So again, watching for a break of this 2682 and a push towards the 2805, what that does is it also puts us above the uh, 55 exponential moving average. As you can see, the past two days, we've gotten rejected by it. So really, after we break the 2682, and we push towards the 2805. I'm hoping that we, um, you know, also don't struggle to break the 2743. So that's what I'm hoping for you guys going into tomorrow. Um, but as always, I also like to point out what I'm looking for levels and levels of support because the market has been really weird this week and with the whole GameStop thing going on again, um, it's kind of going up so i don't know if the market will will be hit as a result of that so i like to point out the upsides that i think are going to happen but also hey here's the downside if you know i'm wrong which i have been definitely right everyone's wrong um with you know trying to predict where stocks can go next but one thing for certain is that our levels have been holding up really nicely so um, hopefully we get that. Hopefully we get the 55 EMA capture. Um, 89 EMA is all the way down here at 2372, which we visited briefly yesterday in that crazy sell-off at the beginning of the day. So hopefully we can capture the 55 EMA, um, use that as a little bit of level of support, and then we start to bounce off that and, and move back up uh, in the future days slash weeks. So that's all I had for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to drop a like down below, subscribe to my channel. If you are new, comment down below what your thoughts on Palantir are. And I'd love to chat with you guys down there. Let's remember to be a bit better every single day. And until next time.